Are all AEW pay-per-views about to become two-day events? We'll talk about it. Plus, a top NXT star is out of action. And we will answer the question, are we getting WWE 2K23? It's all in the wrestling news right now. Two-day AEW pay-per-views. Mm. Now, this seems like a wild idea, but it seems like something that's happening. Dustin Rhodes let this particular cat out of the proverbial bag at Terrificon when he was discussing uh, a number of things. He talked about uh, AEW potentially running Craven Cottage in the not-too-distant future for a UK show. Mm -hmm. He was talking about running big stadium events. And then he kind of drifted into conversation about AEW pay-per-views and a massive change that could be coming their way when he said, I think we're going to go to two-day events now for pay-per-views, I believe. I heard that down the I heard that down the pike. Don't tell him. It'll be like a WrestleMania experience. You have two days of double or nothing, or two days of all out, or two days of revolution. Hmm. Thoughts, concerns. So on one hand, it, it, they've got a, a roster that's often criticized for being too big and they don't give everybody enough time. So that would help that in a way, but also they could fall foul of maybe padding out two cards a little bit. Although if they do it right, this could be the right thing to do, I think. But it's a case, I guess, of, of building towards two day shows on TV. So, oh, I don't know. I'm conflicted, Tom. I, what, I, I'm i not against this because AEW don't do pay-per-views as consistently as WWE. That's true. So the fact that we only get like four or five a year, yeah. it allows you to kind of make them into weekend events. We're kind of almost there with them anyway because you have Rampage on the Friday and then you have the pay-per-view itself on the Saturday. Yeah. So you're kind of halfway there living on a prayer already. So, and as you say, the massive roster, and as you say, um, making sure that everybody gets a shine. AEW pay-per-views, as we've said on many occasions, are very, very long. Don't say it to Tony Khan, though, in a press conference, because he will then explain at length about how they're not too <laughs> yeah. long. I don't think pay-per-views are very long. It all started. In... <laughs> yeah, so I mean- Call me Ishmael. <laughs> <laughs> they are too long, Tony, but have them over two days. Right. A bit like, so this is kind of the WrestleMania solution because we had the same thing with WrestleManias a few years ago when they were just like mm. ridiculously long. So they mm. went, let's, well, you know, the pandemic forced their hand to do it but then when they tried it they liked it so yes. now wrestlemanias are two days all the time and it's great because they go we can just sell two lots of seats well, yeah it's great yeah. for aew they could sell that they could sell arenas and stadiums twice i mean aw or attempt to aw already seemed to have um tried to turn every pay-per-view because as you say they're so infrequent into like a weekend event anyway because they have Starcast and they have uh, and they have all kinds of different events going on and they mm. turn it into like a mini wrestlemania weekend almost so that would definitely lend itself well to the kind of festival feel I suppose as well I'm not against it no. I, I think with a I think AEW could potentially have some some storming weekends where you have a Saturday and a Sunday card with like five matches on each mm -hmm. five matches that have time mm -hmm. which don't burn out the crowd yeah I think that's a lovely idea I was uh, I think it's a lovely idea as well just just on on Dustin Rhodes talking about a possible UK show at Craven Cottage Fulham mm. Stadium and obviously Tony Khan well, his, his dad owns Fulham. Mm. Um, or does Tony own Fulham? Or do they both own a bit of Fulham? I don't really know. The, the Someone's style. got a Fulham. I was watching... Um, Tony's got half of them. <laughs> I was watching... Um, they've been playing Monopoly, and one of them's got... <laughs> um, I was watching Fulham versus Liverpool, their opening match last weekend, and I was trying to... I was looking at the stadium thinking, how would this be set up for a wrestling show? Obviously, it wouldn't look the same as it does for a football match, but I was like, which bits would they cut off? How would it... Because it all seemed a bit flat for a... I don't know. I presume that they would, I wonder whether AEW would lean into sort of like the, the football pitch, the soccer pitch aesthetic mm. and just have like the, the entrance where the players come out as like the entrance. That would be cool. For like the wrestlers. That. Yeah. So you have like a, a rampway that leads their ring in the center. The, the, Tarmac. There rice. is there is a cottage in one corner of the stadium, um, which would be oh. quite a unique feature if they use something like that. You need Tony sat up there and the executive, because apparently it's like their members, it's like their box area now, the the, the, the cottage itself. Oh, they need to use the cottage. Make the cottage Anarchy the arena, uh -huh. stadium stampede, mm -hmm. frottage at the cottage. <laughs> okay, yes, why not? There we go. <laughs> I can't think of any words that rhyme with cottage. 
Uh, Put them in the comments below. Yeah. Um, moving away from AEW to WWE, PW Insider revealing that the Rumble next year is heading potentially to San Antonio, Ooh. Texas at the Alamo. Oh, no. I think I'm cute, but I know I'm sexy. I've got the moves. <laughs> He's got to do something. He's got to do Dude, something. Jose everything. Lothario. <laughs> yes, Jose Lothario's got to do it. Marty Janetti has to appear. Oh, what no. a dream. Of course, if it's in San Antonio, Texas, and again, this is just a report at the minute. They're just looking at it according to PW Insider. If it is in San Antonio, Sean's got to do something, surely. With trips running creative, he go, hey, Sean, come on, mate. And Sean's like, I no, I don't know if he'd be... I'm old. Come on. Uh, I don't know if he'd be in the Rumble. To be fair, oh, it wouldn't. Could you imagine? And it wouldn't be as demanding as like a full match as well. He could just do a bit of a bit of a rumble and then be out of the rumble. Yeah, I'm. Um, yeah, we're not Can saying. He still skin the cat, possibly. I just have him in there, in the middle. His music hits. Everyone gets a sweet chin music. Right. Some some just some some mid level heel tries to hoy him out. He skins the cat. Yeah. Sweet chins him, chucks him out, and then some like a a, a star hoys him. Yeah, out. yeah. That that's exactly what should happen. There you go. Yes. And he could do the, even the 2010, like trying to cling onto the ropes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that bit was great God. when he was doing yes. that. And then he, um, my heart, I remember watching that live oh. and my heart was in my, in my throat. Yes. For Sean doing what, that. 2010 is one of them. It's maybe my favorite rumble. It's, you a, great know? it's a great rumble. It's a really it's good rumble. rumble. Uh, head over to NXT, which is, um, you know, a, partly Sean's baby. He was running it while Triple H mm -hmm. was away. Uh, and one of uh, the top stars from there is, is going to be off the, out of the ring for a little while. And in terms of timing, I think this is a very unfortunate one because Solo Sokoa seemed to be kind of slowly on the rise. He's been in the mix for certain things. I had a theory that, because obviously recently he had that uh, Falls Count Anywhere street fight sort of match with Von Wagner. Mm. In the midst of that match, which he won as well, which is a big deal. But in the midst of that match, he he embarrassed Carmelo uh, Hayes in front of some lovely ladies in the car park. <laughs> I wrote that. <laughs> I tried to make Matthew laugh. I put that in our notes for the podcast. Like, <laughs> he embarrassed himself in front of some lovely ladies. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, what great ladies. And um, he pushed him into the car seat because he got in his way and he pushed him into his own convertible and all the lovely ladies were like, oh my goodness. I can't date you. <laughs> You've fallen in your car. Yeah. So Carmelo Hayes is the North American champion. And I thought so was a cut. I thought that was going to be lead up to a title shot, but that might be put on the back burner for now if this news is indeed true. Yeah, I, I imagine they'll pick up the pace on that again. I like. I think that Sokoa has got a bright future ahead. Oh, I think yeah. it starts with a singles run in NXT. Yes. Uh, he will not be part of wave next week but Tony D'Angelo and Santos Escobar will in a street fight now if uh, Santos wins then Legado del Fantasma are free from Tony's tribe however should Tony win Santos is banished from NXT but the rest of Legado have to stay with Tony oh now I'm quite a fan of both these guys individually uh, especially both these guys especially these Santos guys. Escobar dating back to when he was in Lucha Underground when he was fantastic but I feel like this storyline hasn't delivered on the potential it had. With the merging of the families, I don't think there was enough shenanigans going on. Mm. And it barely feels like they've really joined. And now it's... Uh, so. Uh, but I'm sure the match will be a good one, though. Carmelo Hayes will also defend the North American title against Giovanni Vinci. Mm. Vinci throwing down the challenge last night to the champ. And the champ's like, yeah, all right, we'll have a little... Fair. Again, as you say, maybe this was a spot for Solo Sokoa. Possibly, but in terms of replacements, who's going to deliver a good in-ring match? Oh, Vinci. I mean, Vinci. Vinny, Vinny, Vinci. During the latter days of Imperium, he was almost like the standout star in those tag matches. So. Absolutely more. Uh, Cora Jade and Roxanne Perez oh. will do their best Champa Gargano impression <laughs> as we see a tag team grudge match yes. uh, at Heat I yes. wonder whether they will run this like Champa Gargano. Please do. At, at, at like times five speed. But you did point out that you had items in your fridge that lasted longer than their time. <laughs> I certainly did. There was a, the yogurt has since been thrown out, by the way. <laughs> Uh, there's still a cucumber that I think <laughs> is... Did Alundra Blaze come along and drop it in the bin? <laughs> <laughs> she, she, that's, that's basically who takes all the stuff out of my bin. We let Alundra Blaze in. She's a big fan of Pablo. Uh, previously announced for Heat Wave as well, which is next week, which is uh, Mandy Rose and Zoe Stark for the women's title. Mm. I think Zoe Stark's winning. You think they're going to do it? I've got a feeling in my waters that Trips might want Toxic Attraction on the main roster. Oh, good point. Very good. Yeah. I think this is how we get there. I think, uh, I think the women's division's at a point where 
M -m -m Mandy and co can head up and it'll be fine. And then who do we build if, if assuming that, that that does happen, I guess you've got quite a few heels in the women's division who could challenge Cora Jade, Cora, who's now evil. Yeah, evil Cora Jade, Roxanne Perez in yeah. a singles feud yeah, there, yeah. Nikita Lyons, they're tag teaming in the women's division. Can they get along? Can they coexist yeah. with Maggie and Rob? Uh, they can't, so therefore they fall out. Um, there you got a feud there. Lash Legend, yeah. Lash Legend, yes. Not? Ivy Nile. Mm. Ivy, I love Ivy Nile. I'd, I'd love to see one. that be yeah, a she's thing. she's very good. Uh, so Pl plenty of options for for, for Zoe there uh, if, when she wins, if she wins. Uh, and Bron Breaker defending against oh, JD McDonough. That evil man. He knows how to break down a human body. He knows how to... I see the calcium deposit on your knuckles there. <laughs> That's what he said to Wade Barrett. Yeah. Yours of bare knuckle back. <laughs> bare knuckle back, sing. You <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Would you believe Tom? I actually, I actually have Irish heritage, but I don't think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that in Ireland if no, I were you. No, no, <laughs> I wouldn't no. do that. I'd be as welcome as, as me, a Campbell going to Scotland. <laughs> um, Carrion Cross and Scarlet, uh, bit of news for them. So they were booked for Defy Wrestling on the 20th of August, but then they got hired for WWE. Yes, as you do. However, uh, good guys, Dub Dub E, are saying you can't wrestle, but go and do the meet and greet for them instead. I guess that's a compromise. I on one hand, you might say WWE boo spoil sports, not letting them wrestle, but I guess they just don't want to risk. It would be the worst possible time for one of them to get injured, I guess. So it yeah. makes sense. I'm I'm happy to see Cross and Scarlet back for multiple reasons. Mm. One of them being is that 2K22 is more update again. Is it, and I'm grateful for Triple H because it seems like every single week 2K22 becomes more persistent, more more. more the, co the continuity is fixed in 2K22. Okay. <laughs> Which is but, nice. Loomis, Dakota Kai, Karrion Cross, they're all in the game, and now they're back, no, they're back. The thing as well. He's just trying to make it true to life. He's good like that. But Tom, I've had enough of talking about 2K22. Already? Are we going to get a 2K23? That's my question. All eyes point to yes in this case. Take Two Interactive, okay. who are the publishers, have listed 2K23 as part of their fiscal year 2023 releases. Now, the fiscal year is sort of for them from October onwards. Okay. I doubt we'll get 2K23 in October. Right. I think they quite like the idea. This is just a hack theory. I think they like the idea of the 2K game coming out around WrestleMania. Uh, I see. That yeah. seems to feel quite nice makes sense to do yeah. it that way so we will get uh, a 2k23 game from 2k so it looks as if that all the all the healing is done from 2k20 all is forgiven fair enough we all move on <laughs> we've clipped through our final apron uh, other releases for take two that year just if you're interested uh, a new nba game a new pga game and if you're a fan of borderlands tiny tina's wonderland a spin-off of that is coming out so post-release content for the borderlands spin-off and also they're doing a mobile version of gta Definitive, and I'm sure that'll go much better this time. <laughs> Messy, the, tri the definitive trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, Tom, we do have to end on sad news. We do, we do, because uh, we are paying our respects today uh, to a wrestling and martial arts legend that we lost in Gene LaBelle. Uh, reported by PW Insider that he passed away at the age of 89. He was a martial arts trained uh uh, uh, athlete, he was a professional wrestler, a stunt performer. He was an innovator in so many ways, yeah. He, he was really amazing, was. absolutely amazing. He, he was at the age of seven, he was training under Ed Strangler Lewis in the art of wrestling. Mm. So at seven, he could break. <laughs> yeah. Um, had a background in judo as well, won the uh, Amateur Athletic Union National Judo Championships twice in the 50s, uh, moved over to professional wrestling and took part in uh, NWA Los Angeles, promoted it a bit. He also refereed the boxing versus wrestling match between Muhammad Ali and Antonio. Neo and Noki as well, that, that infamous match, oh, very famous match, I suppose. I don't know if it's infamous. I think it's infamous. It's a weird one, isn't it? But yeah, but, but it's, it's a, certainly a historic moment. He's part of a wrestling curiosity, mm. uh, is, is, is uh, our man Gene LaBelle. Uh, I, I think if you were to ask anybody about Gene LaBelle, I think everyone's got great stories about Gene LaBelle. Maybe not uh, Steven Seagal. Uh, who Steven <laughs> yeah. Seagal famously like the toughest man in the world ever, according to Steven Seagal. And uh, he, I mean, I'm, I'm frightened to say that. I'm worried he's got connections. Uh, but but basically they, they were together on the set of Out for Justice and uh, LaBelle had heard Seagal saying, oh, my Aikido training means I'm immune to being choked unconscious. So LaBelle went, I'll tell you what, let's have a go. So he puts him in a choke. <laughs> 
chokes the girl unconscious. Okay, <laughs> Not many can say they did that. Uh, he was also, he was the inspiration for Brad Pitt's character in the Tarantino film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, of course he and was! Appara- well, apparently so, and Brad Pitt's character in that is basically cool older man who was very cool and tough, but also kind of sensitive as well. And if that's true to life, then apparently he must have been a very cool guy. Uh, among people that LaBelle trained, this is incredible, a list of people that LaBelle was, was part of training. Ronda Rousey, Roddy Piper, Chuck Norris. Yes, and also the MMA fighter Manny Gamburi. Oh, Manny Gamburi as well, of course. Of course. Um, and his legacy is le- uh, will last on in pro wrestling in many ways, but also in the name of Brian Danielson's LaBelle Lock. The LaBelle well, Lock, of course. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tributes have come in for Gene LaBelle. Ariel Helwani saying, sad to hear the passing of Gene LaBelle. What a larger than life legend. Such an honor to see him at the Rousey fights over the years. God bless Judo Gene. Uh, the Cauliflower Alley Club saying, everyone here at the CAC, saddened to hear the legendary Judo Gene LaBelle has passed at the age of 89. Longtime supporter, lifetime member of the CAC, an actor, a pro wrestler, martial artist, stuntman, and more. And Shayna Baszler, uh, who shared a very real conversation that she had with Gene LaBelle when she, he was trying to convince Shayna Baszler to move away from fighting and get into stunt work where he went, I won every R-E-A-L fight I ever had and was penniless. I lost every R-E-E-L fight I ever had and made millions. Fair play. Oh, yes. bless him. Uh, Shayna in tribute says, I'm still calling it a double wrist lock just so you know. Uh, a little gag between them two. Uh, what a guy. Incredible mm. story. Do take time to find out more about the incredible history of Gene LaBelle. Yes, absolutely. May put something together on the podcast feed this week if time allows. Uh, but all the best to the friends and family from us here at Coldholic to uh, the legend that is Gene LaBelle. More wrestling news throughout the day at Cultaholic.com. Stay safe. Love you, bye.